already on day one of uh, the Centre Court MBA Festival. We've taken you from uh, Charlottesville on the East Coast to London, uh, and now we continue our journey to Barcelona and Spain. And, and this idea of, of a journey, we've called this panel where the ESA MBA can take you. And it is this remarkable journey top business schools and the opportunities, both this extraordinary uh, international classroom that they bring together uh, every year, uh, and then the uh, international opportunities that their graduates pursue. And to be able to capture both sides of, of that, I'm delighted to welcome uh, Deborah McCandless. Uh, Deborah is the Associate Director of MBA Admissions at IESA and Karen Fitzpatrick, the Associate Director for IESA's Career Development Centre. We've spoken about that dialogue between admissions and careers as they think about great candidates and, and where the IESA MBA might take them. Uh, Deborah, I'll, I'll start with you. Um, and I suppose we really just want to sort of set the scene. Uh, IESA is a business school, and I've mentioned it as you know being one of the world's top business schools. Um, what, what is it for you? And, and both in terms of the mission, of the school and how that's represented in its values, but you know this tremendous reputation that you have and how you use Barcelona as then the starting point for this great international journey. Yeah, so in addition to working for the school, Karen and I are both actually alumna from the school as well. So we've been in the shoes of people that are looking at programs. And I think in terms of what makes YESA special, and you can say IESE as well in case you're not fluent in Spanish, that is also acceptable. But for us that have lived in Barcelona, the Spanish version just tends to roll off the tongue a little bit easier. But in, in terms of kind of what makes YESA a special institution, I think some of it, as you mentioned, does come from the mission and paraphrasing the mission of YESA is to support leaders who aspire to have a positive lasting impact. So for us, we view business as a way to have a positive effect in the world. And that's the lens through which YESA also teaches. And, and I will mention, we are very, very heavy with case study methods. So a, much of our teaching is about putting yourselves in the shoes of a manager and trying to figure out what you should do in a given situation, given kind of the complexities and the gray areas that, that, that the real world can provide. And also doing that within a context that's very global. So this is why I personally, as, as an American, chose to come to Spain is because I didn't want to just have the American perspective reinforced. I wanted to be in an educational environment that was going to expand me in a way that staying at home would not. So having that context within a case study model, having students from all over the world, there's a very strong emphasis on kind of different cultural approaches to how business works and what we can learn from each other as well. And yes, it definitely does take that academic side very seriously. And I think it makes for very strong business leaders coming out because it really, really helps to develop those soft skills, that leadership that, that businesses really value post MBA. Right. Now there's a business school in Boston. I, I can't think what its name of Someone mentioned it to me that, that, that also uses the case method. Well, Harvard Business School, of course, was one of the founding schools with, with uh, IESA's uh, launch uh, nearly 70 years ago. Um, you, you talk about, you know, all of these international voices coming together for that case discussion. Uh, as a, as a graduate of the program, what does that mean in terms of how you're then looking at it through this global lens? What, what, what added value does having so much international perspective bring? Yeah, I, I mean, I can definitely speak from experience. There's a certain element of once when you're in a particular context, you, you learn, you know, you pick up habits and you pick up understandings from that. And I think you know, YESA helps you to challenge the ways that you've learned, the way you've been brought up in terms of your professional cultural backgrounds to, to ask, you know, is this the right way to do it because it's how I've always done it? Or is it the right way to do it because it is in fact the right way to do it? And I think it is really helpful to, to be able to take that step back and realize oh, okay, this is, I view business this way because I was in this industry within this cultural context. And this is the rule of law that I'm used to. This is the culture that I'm used to. This is the team dynamic that I'm used to. But what happens when I'm pulled out of that? What happens 
if there's something I don't expect? Am I able to adjust? Am I able to react well to that? And I think that cultural element is so important because it's not that any given school is going to be able to tell you exactly how to do business in every single country around the world. It's not going to, but it can give you the skills that you need to understand kind of the cultural perspective you're coming from and where misalignments can come, where those miscommunications can happen that can really hamstring your professional opportunities. So whether that's heading into, in, heading between, moving between cultures where, you know, how you have to engage with clients is different. So where different elements can be considered rude versus just general expectations, how aggressive or direct you are. You know, these are sensitivities that you need to function when you're dealing with a global economy where you're going to have all of those interactions and you need to understand like where the, you need to make sure everyone in the room is on the same page. And I think yes, is really, really strong at that because it is really the interactions on a day-to-day -day basis is making sure that everyone in that room understands what you're saying and that you're on the same page, which is really important if you're actually trying to be impactful that, you know, that everyone on the team understands what's going on. And, you know, sometimes it's just adjusting language, sometimes it's adjusting approach. And I think YESA really does help to provide that flexibility and that, that ability to tune in to those differences and adjust. Right. Uh, with that sort of um, global uh, adaptability and mindset, Karen, uh, you know, the likes of BCG are, are very engaged with the school, even a number of their diversity fellowships uh, for, for uh, EASA students, um, and perhaps how the case then really prepares them for a, a nimble career, whether it's in strategy consulting or uh, tech, so many career opportunities. D do you feel that in your discussions with recruiters, they really recognize what Deborah is describing of, you know, here is this international audience with just an ability to look at challenges through those different lenses and how that's gonna really serve them well in the next steps of their career? Absolutely, that comes through in, in, in you know, all the interactions that our students have with employers and also in our numbers. I mean, around, I think, 62 to 65 percent uh, of the class usually ends up changing geography after the MBA. Um, so, so it also shows that people are adaptable and they're going from one place to another. Um, and the other thing that we, we often hear from our recruiters as well is just the the, the level of preparation of the essay students, both adaptively um, in terms of, as, as Deborah was saying, intercultural awareness and interaction, but also, um, you know, just in general, their, their academics, their, their preparation for, um, you know, challenges on the job. And, and the fact that it's a two-year program, Karen, obviously that enables it a deeper dive and maybe more reflection on next career steps. Does the duration of the program make a big difference in terms of subsequent career opportunities? I think it does. Personally, as an alum, that was one of the appeals uh, for me because what a two-year program allows you to do is to have that internship opportunity uh, in, in between. So students get to try something out. Um, you know, they get to kind of test out a hypothesis about their career that, you know, I think I might be interested in X. So it's a fantastic opportunity for that. Um, and it, it does give them more time for more classes, more case studies, more exposure to different industries, to different classmates. So I think indeed the, the two-year element of it does, does really help in those career transitions. Deborah, um, Karen talks about nearly two thirds of the class then changing geography. There is the question, well, why would you ever leave Barcelona? It's one of Europe's great cities. It has culture, it has sunshine, it has some of the biggest tech, and sort of mobile technology uh, events taking place. What, what, how does the location feed into uh, the school and the opportunities that it then provides to students? Yeah, so, I mean, I personally love Barcelona. It's a fantastic place to live. Um, in terms of, you know, the location, what it means for the student body, uh, Barcelona itself has become a startup hub over the last few years, and that's definitely a very vibrant community, and it's an area that, that YESA really engages with, is that kind of startup space in general. So there are actually you know, a chunk of students that will stick around to start something on their own 
in Barcelona or to join startups themselves in Barcelona. Um, that said, you know, YESA has a huge global diaspora post program. So I think we get a lot of questions about, you know, what the employment market is like in Spain. And as much as I love Spain, uh, it is not the place for everyone. People have other, other areas where they want to be for whatever reasons that are important to them. And I think YESA is quite used to launching people on a more global route as well. So, you know, you do have the people that fall in love with Barcelona and choose to never leave. But um, there are definitely people that will head back to their home countries. There's people that move to, to a, a third location as well between continents. It, it really kind of depends on the individual and everyone's journey is, is a bit different. And that said, I, you know, I had my reunion uh, last month and definitely had very strong showing after, after COVID where, you know, any, pretty much almost any ESA alum will, would love any excuse to come back and, and visit Barcelona if we don't happen to live here. Well, I, I guess those graduating classes, Karen, and, and, and as you watch them speak, spreading their wings and, and, and where next steps. Uh, looking at the get graduating class of this year, 2022, I mean, it's you know, been two unprecedented and very disruptive years. Um, so you know, what does placement look like? Uh, are there uh, industries uh, and, and even remote working uh, that has really emerged and is here to stay? What, what have you seen in terms of uh, this year's class and career opportunities? Yeah, well, so far, I mean, you know, we we don't have the full numbers until a few months uh, down the road, but so far it's it's quite strong. Um, I would say, um, you know, generally speaking, I think we're we're close to being in very in line with last year, which was also a great year. So last year, for example, ninety four percent of the class had a job within three months of graduation. Um, so numbers are strong. I would say the remote work piece is more for some internships uh, than full time. Um, what we're seeing a lot is that, um, you know, most places are going back to full in person uh, at the moment. And, and someone has just uh, written in to ask about some of the most popular countries that graduates are going to within that uh, mobility. Do you see certain uh, areas of the world that, uh, that are really strong in terms of recruitment and demand right now? We do. I mean, it's 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 a little bit all over just because, as Deborah was saying, our, our students are from literally everywhere. But I would say in Europe, um, we have a lot of people that end up in London. Um, Amsterdam has quite a few. Germany. Germany tends to be a big recruiter. Um, Switzerland, Spain, of course, is a big recruiter in our our home market. Um, and then, you know, another another country that was very popular this year is, it seems to be Mexico. Um, so we, you know, we do have kind of other other geographies that pop up now and then. Uh, Deborah, I'm not sure if you can think of anything else I'm forgetting off the top of my head. Yeah, I mean, Dubai also is an area that we, we send a lot of people, especially because it's English speaking. So you see a particular strength in consulting in Dubai. I think you also see some roles in tech in some other areas, but definitely consulting. Um, yeah, I mean, literally, you name a country, there is a yes grad there pretty much. Um, and given, given the history of the school, given that we've been around for so long and you know, we're founded in Spain, we also have very deep alumni networks in Latin America as well, which can be very helpful for people that want to make that transition too. But literally, you know, you name a part of the, a corner of the globe, there is a YSA graduate that has landed there. Great. Um, Karen, we were talking earlier about a, a curriculum program this is this is not uh, two years of uh, just enjoying the beach in Barcelona um, to understand how the careers team then accompanies students through that two-year process presumably you meet them fairly early on how are you then working with them both perhaps with an eye to that summer internship and then of course uh, longer term outcomes as they graduate from the program Sure. Well, uh, we we actually start even before we meet them um, with a couple of pre-onboarding career assignments for them to think about and work on uh, to make the most of that summer before they start the MBA program. And then every September, we have what we call a career boot camp of sorts. So it's a couple of weeks where we have some intense days giving them all the career knowledge and skill building um, that they're going to need to set the foundation for the program. 
After that, they'll join um, different tracks based on the kinds of careers that they're interested in and the preparation required for each of those careers. And in the tracks, you know, we continue with all kinds of preparation sessions. There's a lot of interaction with professional clubs. Um, ESA is also special because we have, sounds funny to say, but unlimited one-on-one um, -on -one coaching. So, you know, we don't have a cap on the number of sessions that students can do with our advisors here in the team. Uh, and we also have resources to help students who are a little bit lost or who aren't exactly sure what they wanna to do to get more direction in their career focus. And then within those different career tracks, you know, we're helping them. Oh, go ahead. Sorry. No, no, please, please. I was just going to say within those career tracks, you know, we're doing everything from engaging them with employers, um, organizing treks to go visit um, employers in different cities um, where you're teaching them how to prepare for, for, you know, the applications for the interviews. So, so we really take a, a hands-on approach um, where students are able to really take as much uh, from the, the careers team as, as they, they want. All right. Just just to, to stop on the idea of all of that one on one coaching, because, you know, coming through university, we didn't have that sort of um, uh, special treatment. Um, I mean, it really is a gift to be able to work one on one and, and think about, you know, skill sets, perhaps some skill sets you didn't even realize that you have. Uh, and, and so this incredible opportunity through the MBA to really understand yourself and how that plays in. And that's, that's an incredible resource you're offering. Yes, and to be honest, that's one of my favorite parts of the job as well, um, you know, and, and it, is a, it is a gift, you know, because if you decide to do a two-year MBA, you're taking time out of the workforce, you're taking time to focus on yourself, to build skills, to build knowledge, to build a network. And it's, it's a great opportunity when you're feeling challenged and when you're kind of in this new experience and new environment to really, you know, do this introspection um, and, and really make the most of it. The application, Deborah, is already a first opportunity for introspection. Uh, and often the idea of, you know, why an MBA at this stage, candidate can you help us to sort of frame because what karen is describing there are so many countless opportunities for, for graduates and yet at the admission stage uh, perhaps trying to bring that together and share with you a coherent story about background and how ESA fits in so i mean do you need someone to have everything mapped out or do you know that they're going to explore play discover and that's part of the magic well, I, I, I was actually talking with Karen over lunch today, and I think to get the most out of the MBA, there's kind of a balance point that you need to find between knowing what you want and being open, because an MBA, especially one that's so heavy with case study, where you're getting thrown into a lot of different, you know, businesses, different, different uh, decision making in, in different contexts, um, it, it stretches you in ways that maybe you weren't expecting. So you suddenly get access to other parts of the professional universe that maybe you hadn't considered before. So I think getting the most out of the MBA is, is a bit of kind of, you don't want to be open to anything anywhere. That is, that will make your life very hard because the shotgun approach to careers is, is miserable. So having some idea of kind of what's important to you, what you value, you know, whether it's the industry or the job function, or you want to work in teams or you want to work individually, the, the more you can kind of whittle out what's important to you. And I know that part of what the Career Development Center does is work with people on their, their true north and figuring out kind of what's, what is the most important part of your career for you. You know, the more you can sort that out, and the more that you can kind of focus, you know, you'll be able to use your time better. But we do completely understand that the MBA is about exploration as well. And you don't have to have everything sorted out, but the more that you can kind of whittle down your, your ideas, the better you're gonna be able to manage your time. Because even though two years sounds like a lot of time, it comes pretty fast and furious at you. You know, it's a very intense program. So the, the more that you can kind of cut through the stuff that isn't going to be important to you so you don't get distracted, the better you can use your time. So, you know, when it comes to the application process and being able to 
say what you want to do. It's not that we necessarily expect everyone to have the exact company, the exact job that they're looking for in the exact location. It's it's fine to be to kind of know that you want to explore a little bit, but I recommend to you know, get the most out of your time because it's a big investment of time and money. You know, the more you can have that thought ahead of time, the more you can whittle things down, the better place you're going to be in to, to, to reach success. Right. And, and with this focus, Karen, on that first job after the MBA, you know, all of these uh, profiles in their mid to late 20s, perhaps early 30s, uh, thinking about that position that comes out of the MBA, but presumably, again, the work that you're doing with your colleagues in career services, it's not just about that first job, but you're creating the platform for the next 5, 10, 15, 20 years. Exactly. And we actually talk about it as skills for life, because one of the things that we do is we teach people how to how to find a job based on, you know, how the world works now, which is very different from how it was, you know, 10 or 20 years ago. Um, and so we, we talk about that a lot. These are life skills and the ability to network, you know, which is something that, yes, serves you extremely well and is very critical in the workplace, but even beyond. Um, so so indeed, we talk about this a lot, that, that, that they are very much transferable life skills. Now, there are opportunities in consulting, finance, technology, you know, some of the, the, the big feeders. As you think, Deborah, in terms of the diversity that you're bringing together in uh, each year of the, the MBA classroom, um, how do you then encourage individuals who perhaps are not in the traditional feeder? You know, the business school hasn't been on their radar for the last mm -hmm. five five years and colleagues every year going off to business school to sort of, you know, encourage them to, to look at what it might offer um, and, and, you know, the personal growth that will follow from there. Yeah. I mean, it is really something that it, it is really learning that you can take with you throughout your career. And I, I do have a lot of conversations with people that don't consider themselves to be the MBA profile. You know, I know, People can can be plagued with self doubt if they they don't think that they're the right banking or consulting background to do an MBA. And I, I'm not going to say we don't have people with those backgrounds. We do, but for us, you know, having diversity of of thought is really important to to building that that academic experience. And also, you know, it helps to build opportunities for people that again are looking to transition. So. You know, we definitely have people that come from a very, very wide variety of backgrounds. And, you know, you see lawyers, you see doctors, we've had like modern dancers, we have an opera singer that's in the program right now who's doing an, an, an internship in MBB right now. So like these transitions are possible. And I, you know, you name it, I can probably come up with an example. You know, I, and I think a lot of people get a little bit disheartened if they don't see themselves as that that MBA. But everyone has something that they can bring, and it's all about kind of finding those transferable skills that that you can bring in, and being able to you know work with the career development center to kind of be able to better highlight like what are the strengths that you're going to bring in, what are the transferable skills. So. You know, someone that comes from a military background where they've never worked in an office their entire lives, but they have a ton of leadership experience and know how to work under pressure. That is something that companies value. So sometimes it's a bit of also getting feedback from, you know, as you go through the program, like working out the skill set that maybe you didn't have because you didn't have the, the office background, but, you know, being able to also kind of balance that with you know, feedback on kind of what are the strengths that maybe you don't value as much in yourself that companies are really going to, to value. Um, so, I, and that's also part of the program is you get a lot of feedback and, you know, every, every person that's in the program is on a team and you work very close with, it, with them and there's feedback that's built in that allows people to help to develop themselves and also understand kind of where their hidden strengths are that, you know, maybe they don't see in themselves, but other people do. So, you know, it is, but again, it's the MBA itself is it's the first job. I think I know is something that everyone tends to focus on, but that career is so important because, you know, we've seen, you know, 
the last two years, it's been very unexpected. And I was in the MBA during the financial crisis, which was a different black swan event. And, you know, I think the only consistence is change. And the MBA is about building up the ability to manage change, to be able to to adjust to how the the world is changing around you. And it, it isn't a static skill. It's something that you take with you, the ability to continue to learn and develop. And that's something that, that kind of all of this work with the case study, all of this work to get other people's perspective on things helps to build in you in terms of you know, making sure that you're better at future-proofing your career. This idea of future-proofing, uh, and Karen, as we think about the class of 2009 or 2010, you know, that graduated during that financial crisis, when they applied to a yes sir, you know, two years before, um, none of them could have guessed quite how the world would have been turned upside down. And you know, the, the last two years, another very good example of that. But as you talk about skills for life and people try to think about, well, when is the right time to apply? What will the job market be like in 2025? In a sense, does that actually matter? Given the skill sets, given the adaptability and, and the constants of change that Deborah alludes to, I mean, Karen, do you just feel, you know, at, at any stage in any market, you're better to face that market with the yes sir, MBA than without? I do. I, I do think that's true. I mean, you know, um, as an example, our employment report from 2020, right, which uh, basically, you know, COVID-19 hit in March 2020, um, and, and these students were graduating in May. And still, you know, we had about 90% of the class with a job within three months of graduation. So, um, I think there's no perfect time. I think it, it's it's really when when the candidate feels right, you know, and the ESC MBA is here to help you. Um, you get the skills, you know, required to network, to position yourself well, to engage with employers. Uh, so I think, you know, in any environment, um, you can you can thrive. Absolutely. Right. And, and finding the right fit, Deborah, perhaps at the heart of all of this. So here we are in the summer your admission cycle for um, the program starting uh, in September next year. Um, talk us through the calendar and just some of the ways that our viewers can then get to know the school, uh, its personality, its culture, obviously coming to visit, but lots of other different ways that they can connect with IESA and its students and graduates. Yeah, so it is a challenge for a school that's as global as us. Not everyone can come visit campus. Not everyone's in that position and we understand that. Um, I, I like to say that the sun doesn't set on yesterday's admissions team. So um, normally I'm responsible for, for North America, Central America, and the Caribbean. I'm part of a, a very global team that actually looks quite a lot like an a MBA team at Yesay. So we have a, we have uh, admissions directors all over the globe. So I'm based in our New York campus. We have we have people based in Sao Paulo, in London, in Japan, Hong Kong, Singapore, uh, Shanghai, and this is all and, and India to help support the needs of our of, of our candidates around the globe. And for the last couple of years, things have been much more remote, obviously, but I think we're starting to get back to, to travel again. So there, there are going to be opportunities to, to meet with admissions, uh, with admissions staff in person in, in various parts of the globe. You can always check out our events page. Um, and we will be hosting stuff in different parts of the globe. We'll, you know, I always recommend if you can try to attend an open day. Uh, so we hold those in Barcelona, but we should also be back to holding those in person in New York and Sao Paulo as well. And we do have virtual versions of it. But I think even beyond that, if you can't meet an admissions team, and even if you can meet part of the admissions team, I always recommend find yes, a students or alumni, and frankly, do this to any for any school that you're applying to, and and really get a feel for them, kind of what their experience is like, because I think it's really hard to distinguish between schools from our websites. Um, it's, it's all very marketing and, and polished, but I think getting that student perspective is really important for understanding the fit. I mean, like, yes, rankings are great, and I'm very proud of how YesA has done on the rankings, but 
it is really important to get to know, like, what does that community feel like? What are the strengths and weaknesses? What's the experience as a student going to be like for you? And make sure that that's the right fit for you. YESA is a very academically tough program. It's, it does a really great job in preparing parent, preparing you for the world, but you know, want to make sure that that's the right fit for you, that you're going to thrive in this program, that you're going to thrive in a really global environment. And those are the people that, that really do well at YESA are the ones that really want to challenge them and stretch themselves. Um, and, you know, I think it's, it's good to just double check that, you know, they're, they're, that schools are walking the walk. So, you know, if you can talk with students, I know when I was looking at programs, that was a really big part of why I chose YESA was kind of that, that sense of community that I got when I talked with students, the generosity, frankly, that I, that I got from the people that I reach out to in terms of the time and that they gave me and, you know, their willingness to share was something that I really, that gave me a really, really good impression of, of yesterday when I was looking at schools. And I recommend like, you know, find the people that you want to be with in the future, because admittedly every class has kind of different, different students, but I think that that spirit that you feel at yesterday is going to be the same from year to year. And it's something that I've really enjoyed being around the essay community for this long is I've met people that graduated in the seventies and I've met people that, that are going to be joining the class and that same kind of sense of community I see from generation to generation. So they have this extraordinary network. They have any number of new uh, business skills, uh, great career outcomes. Uh, Karen, perhaps almost in an intangible way, you know, we, we can look at career outcomes, the, the great uh, salaries uh, graduating three years, five years later, exploring new industries and transformation. But at a purely personal level, and, and even you as, as a graduate of the school, you know, are, are there other elements that you think also then emerge in terms of self-confidence or, or sense of self that, that, that are hard to capture, you know, in, in a career report, but are so fundamental to the two, to your experience that you're giving them? Absolutely. Um, you know, as Deborah was talking about a sense of community, I was reflecting on, you know, my experience and what I hear students in my office tell me all the time, which, you know, is just, you know, you come here and it's it's so diverse, it's so international, and in a way, because most people are not from here, um, you you kind of find a way to, to sort of thrive and you spend time with people from different cultures and you live in Barcelona, right? Where it's 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 speaking they speak Catalan and Spanish and you're kind of figuring it all out. So um, I think it gives people a sense of, of confidence in, in their ability to navigate new situations, navigate things that are unfamiliar, to kind of make friends, to establish rapport with people, um, and to really kind of maybe almost feel this, I don't want to say sense of independence, but but just their their ability to kind of figure things out to thrive to to make it all happen um so i do i do think that those those things very much um you know uh come into the picture when when people do a two-year mba program here yeah and i i would add that if we bring that full, full circle deborah to where we started this conversation just looked beyond your comfort zone you looked at europe and the idea of you know yay what a great time to go and explore the world. Is, is that something that you feel very deeply? Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. I mean, I kind of add to what Karen was saying that, you know, I think in terms of building self-confidence, you know, being around people from so many parts of the world, it, it helps to make the world feel less intimidating, you know? There's always someone that you know. There's always someone that can hold your hand if you're a little bit out of your depth, wherever it is that, that you're going to be. And I, I do think, like, if you have the ability, like, you know, going to, to Barcelona was, was really life-changing for me when I went through it. I, I do tend to think of my life as kind of the pre-YSA and post-YSA in terms of how I understood and interacted with the world around me. I mean, it is, it's built to, to challenge you, but it, it also kind of builds, builds, you know, a curiosity and an, and, uh, an empathy 
that that can cross that can cross cultures more effectively. So you're kind of prepared for whatever life has to throw at you <laughs> way better than I was before. I mean, we talk about the MBA as a life changing uh, experience. The, the fact that both of you uh, are very committed and very proud alums of you know, the, the, the school and the experience that you have and how you can bring applicants and of course students as they come and you can understand uh, the, the journey that they're taking. I'm glad that we're able to capture uh, some of that with Centre Court uh, and uh, to both of you, you know, thank you for, for sharing those perspectives, clearly next steps. And as you've mentioned, Deborah, lots of different ways to connect uh, with the school through the different uh, info sessions and events, both virtual and in-person that, uh, that they have. Uh, so uh, all of our viewers, I think you've uh, had some um, some uh, some great reasons for reaching out to uh, to Deborah and her team, uh, and of course, then Karen and her careers team will be waiting in the wings for when you join the program. But um, Karen, thanks for joining Centercoat. It was a great session together. Thank you so much. Thank you. Take care.